Welcome everybody to your Friday drive-by. This is where we answer your questions. What's on your mind? What's keeping you from being the best version of yourself? We are here to help. I'm Chris Collins and this is Chris Jones. Hello everyone. This is how it works. You call the number, the hotline, the 8333-ASK-SDR. That's 8333-ASK-SDR. You ask your question. You just ask it and then you hang up and uh, sooner or later you hear it on the show or you get a call from somebody going, uh, well, your question's a little out there, a little inappropriate or whatever it is. My favorite are the ones that are really intent that will call and do the question, but then call back and change it and try and do it better the second time. My favorite ones are the ones that aren't really a question. It's more of a statement about how great they are. It's not a question. It's just them talking about how great they are. One of my favorites are, what are you going to do when it doesn't work? Questions. Those are cool, too. That's a statement also. Yeah. It's a self-professing prophecy. That's good stuff. Okay, let's go to the question. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, taking my call here. Two-part question. Number one, I'm currently looking for service advisors or a service advisor. I'm trying to find someone who, who could potentially develop into a, a top dog uh, advisor. So uh, living in Canada, Western Canada, there's not a whole lot of people around that have backgrounds. So just looking for, I guess, some tips on where to start looking, who to start looking for, what you guys would do. And then the second part of the question is what sort of compensation is usually good for uh, for people, maybe somebody who's starting out and then somebody else who might have some experience. What do you think the, uh, the best way to go about that would be to, uh, to attract somebody? So the first thing that I would say is I personally wouldn't try to develop an advisor. I would try to go find somebody who's already developed and has a track record of performance the way that you can determine that is ask them to bring their numbers. The other thing that you can do in an interview is ask them how many texts are going to follow them. The, the best advisors have technicians following them or wanting to follow them. It's a little pod. So if the advisor says, well, how many do you need? When you ask them that question. Hire them. <laughs> you, might, you might be on to something. <laughs> That's great. So I, I would go out and recruit. I might even relocate somebody. So I would, I would proactively start asking who are the best advisors you ever worked with. I would find out what, you know, around your, I'm getting the sense you're in a remote area. So I w would try to figure out who the best ones are and then I would go after them. I would overpay for somebody really good and jumpstart, you know, the customer can pay for the advisor, because it's as a, they're usually paid on a percentage of what they produce. So the customer is going to pay for it. You can raise your prices to cover the, the advisor. So it's a cost of sale. Most of the time, depending on the, the brand, advisors are 8% of the gross. Some of the brands spread the advisor with parts, or, you know, it depends on if you have a parts transfer or not. So think about that. But at the end of the day, it's usually 8% of gross is what you pay for advisors. As so. a whole, right? Not just on the individual. So like if I look at my total sales and gross profit, I want that compensation number for all advisors to be around 8%, right? Yes. Yep. Now, we don't pay the advisors on gross. We pay them on sales, but it comes out to... Yes, we have to do math behind the math, right? But we might pay them 4% plus some bonuses of their sales, but it's going to average out to about 8 Now, you might have some advisors that aren't performing very well making 5%, and we might have a couple of advisors performing really well making 10 but the average is going to be around 8 at the end of the day. Yeah. And then uh, there was, it was interesting. So um, he said that uh, they're Western Canada, so, and that there might not be a lot of people out there. So I would just say that, you know, when you're thinking about Western Canada and maybe you're in one of those places in BC or Alberta that might not have as big a population, but there's people even in Western Canada that have been doing it at a pretty good level at, for a long time that I like the idea of a relocate in that, in that particular instance. So I might be marketing towards Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver to try to reload people if you live in one of the smaller areas in the Western Canada area. You're in a pretty remote area. You're, you have an advantage because 
they can uh, they can get more for their dollar. Yeah, walk outside and take a picture. Like it's just beautiful out in that area. You know what's funny though is that this question keeps um, I'm getting asked more. I don't know if you are, but I think that the the advisor thing is demand is starting to catch up to tech demand. Have you heard a lot more people asking you about trying to find the best advisors lately? I didn't think about it that way in the sense that they've kind of always asked that, but the tech thing. Yeah, it's bigger news, up. right? But I, I, I'm always surprised when people say, uh, oh, we just got three new advisors. And I'm like, oh, where'd they come from? They're like, oh, well, one was a waiter and one was Starbucks. And I'm like, you started three advisors that have no experience? And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, Oof. thinking in my head. Yep, one of the yeah, 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 yeah. I would start one. If I had six advisors, I would start one newbie, and that's only after I had a bunch of rock stars. Yeah, because you start you start that many newbies. It's like you know the culture is one of uh, doubt and mistakes. Like there's just a lot of learning going on. That was one of the first pieces of advice you gave me. No, the first piece of advice I gave you was don't eat yellow snow. Remember when you were out there at three in the morning plowing the lot? Oh, I remember. Do you remember me asking you why you were doing that? Yeah, I just thought that that's what a good service manager did. Yeah. I do remember and then that. Do you remember when you were in the showroom uh, unclogging the toilet? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> well, that certainly would happen. No, but I remember I came in and you'd been there almost all night yeah. plowing. It all looked good. You plowed it for sure. Now, is that more amazing now that you know how terrible of a driver I, I am that I was able to make all that happen? Oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> but at any rate, so besides the yellow snow advice, which was solid, and I still use it to this day, especially here, um, you, one of the first pieces of advice you gave me was you cannot have more than one project at a time. And it was about advisors when we were talking yeah. about adding to the staff. And I was like, and well... It's a project, getting somebody up that has no idea... Yeah, so my, my comment to you is like, well, I just interviewed this person. They, they don't have any experience, but uh, she was so great with people. And like you could see that I think she was a uh, waitress or something to that effect. Like it was, a, it was a customer service job. She was wonderful. And you're like, yes, but you've got this project over here. And you can't possibly run the department and have two projects at a time. You can either manage the project or manage the store. You know, the other thing, too, that is a byproduct of this advice is like, let's say you're going to start three Starbucks baristas and they're all of a sudden going to become advisors. Just in our experience, what's the uh, six months down the road? What's the success rate on that? One in three. I would guess one out of three of them. Makes yeah. It. What's the success rate when you have one project, one person, you pick the best one of those three and make them your project? Probably 80, 90 percent would be, yeah. I guess. So what happens is when you start three, they are all disenchanted by the industry, the stress, the whole thing. But when you have one, they're surrounded by experienced advisors and they see the poise and how it's supposed to be. So I would overpay for experience and then grow my own. It's the same thing in the shop. I got to fill the shop with good attitudes and experience and then bring in new guys. A lot of times you bring in new guys, they end up just like those old dogs that don't want to do anything because that's who they're around. That's their... Yeah, we have to be very conscious of the environment we're bringing people into. That's exactly their example right. of tenure and success is the guy that doesn't want to work on warranty. Yeah. You know what's funny is, is I'm even now thinking that. I said one out of three, but the truth is when you start three at the same time, the best chance is that none out of three make it. That happens more than not. Yes. I think that I'm, I'm wrong on the one out of three. I think it's typically zero out of three, whereas one out of one would have made it. Yeah. Like that's completely the situation. Because they're around advisors that are pros and then it rubs off on them. Yeah. There's no reason to be stressed. You know, it's just, we go to work every day kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, and imagine all the other things that come with having, let's say you have six advisors and three are brand new baristas. Like as a manager, you're, you're volunteering to drive to purgatory because the customer issues that come up with a new advisor, the other advisors numbers suffer because they're doing the, they're backstopping the three new advisors. Like the whole thing is like, if you sit and think about it before you do it, you don't do it. Yeah. Good stuff. Great question. That was fun. Yeah. See you next time on Service Drive Revolution. Thanks for watching this week's Drive By. 
I hope we gave you something to think about over the weekend. We're uploading new stuff every day, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, call 8333-ASK-SDR and we'll answer your question on the show. That's 8333-ASK-SDR. For special deals on our books and training, head over to offers.chriscollinsinc.com. Now that's offers.chriscollinsinc.com. I'm Chris Collins and I'll see you in the next video.